what's going on with you? I wanted to share a story, something interesting to have, and I thought it was uh, a little comical and shit. I got a weird sense of humor and shit. So I, um, I'm chilling with my homie, and we always talking about how we can improve the community, and we have a lot of things that we're working on and shit. So uh, we just talking about the things that need to be changed and how we got to where we got as a people and how things are really changing really fast. You know what I mean? Like, it's just technology's moving so fast. And maybe that's the detriment of people, he was saying. And it's like, man, maybe, maybe technology is what has messed us up. You know, we want everything so instantly and we're so spoiled and everything has to be convenient. If it's not convenient, you know, we don't want it. If we have to work for it, then right, that's a no-go. It's a no-go. So then he was like, yeah, man. Yeah, man, people need to be able to, to accept change and use it for the good of the community, not for all this dumbass stuff that we do. And everything's for enjoyment, right? You know what I'm saying? Everything's for enjoyment. So I was like, yeah. Another thing that's killing the community is them cigarettes. Oh, hit him right there with it. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he put it out. My other homie across the table was like, yeah, man. I used to smoke cigarettes back in the day. He, he uh, I think he's 60, he's 65. So he was like, yeah, I used to smoke cigarettes back in the day. And it just takes your lungs. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't ever be the person you want to be. And he was telling me how his sister, he was telling her for 40 years to quit cigarettes. 40 years but he told her you know you can't force nobody to do nothing but they're from a different generation where you can tell somebody hey your child is acting up hey you know what i'm saying i seen your niece over there smoking with the wrong people you can come to somebody back in that time and be like you know i saw your son down the street doing drugs so i whooped him and sent him home now anytime you tell somebody something they get in their feelings they so hurt. Oh, you being so mean. You a hater. Like, nah. And what was funny about this is because he's like, yeah, 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 you right, smoke, you right, smoke. You right, you right, you right. You put it out and shit. And, the, you know, we, we continued to talk. And my, my old head man was telling me, like, yeah, his sister, she's still alive. But her health is never going to be the same because she smoked all those years. So he's like, you know, it hurts me, but I try to tell her for years. Now she got, I think he said COPD, but yeah, yeah, COPD, and she has to walk around with the um, little oxygen tank. And, um, you know, like, it's just, it was unnecessary. So midway through the story, I see my homie who put the cigarette out, he jittering, he jittering and shit. Like, oh, he can't take it, he can't take it. So we started talking about other things, started talking about other current events and stuff like that. He picked a cigarette up, started smoking it. I look at him, he's like, oh, my bad smoke, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like, nah, man, no need to be sorry, homie. You know, I'm telling you this stuff because I love you, dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't have no issue with you. I don't care that you smoke a cigarette. That's not my business. I want to see you live a long time. Yeah, I hate the smell of them, of course, and I don't like to be around them, but I tolerate it because... I enjoy your company, but when it gets too much, you know, I, then I up and I excuse myself. I don't be like, oh, this cigarette smoke is killing me. I just, you know, I got shit I got to do. I'm going to catch up with y'all later. Like, anybody who knows me knows that's how I move. I'll be sitting here chilling with you for a little bit and just be like, all right, y'all, I'm out. You gone? Yeah, I'm out. I got to bust a move and shit. That's just me. Like, you never know when you're going to see me coming and when you're going to see me going. I like to keep it that way because I don't want to have anybody else and any of the things that I got going on. Because, you know what I mean, that's how people get in fucked up situations. You know what I'm saying? Hanging with somebody, doing something, and then you know about it, or you in the wrong place at the wrong time, so I always want to protect people. Because um, sometimes I just get up and go, and you know, I might go do some crazy shit. <laughs> but anyway, so, he was smoking a cigarette, and we, we started talking about it again, of course. And he was just like, man, he wants to quit. And I commend him. That's my man, Sincere. I commend you, Sincere. I know you want to quit, brother. 
Yeah, I know it don't happen overnight. But the thing that I really, I really appreciated about that conversation is that he just took in what we were saying. He didn't get defensive. He didn't make excuses saying, oh, well, you know, I've been smoking this long and my folks, they smoked up in the 90 and my grand peoples, they was a hundred something years old and cigarettes don't harm us like that. He said, you know, I do need to make a change. This ain't good for me. And I want to be a better person. And that's it. That's all it's about. Wanting to be better people, see. And it's so fucked up that we can't come and we can't tell each other like, yo, you're slipping, man. Like, the way you moving out here in these streets, I don't want to see you get locked up. But I'm that type of nigga, yeah. I done told many, my back keep looking around, I'm outside. I want to try something new, I need some fresh air. You know, I, you never know, somebody might like, I'm alive, man. you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I told many of my friends, like, dog, the, the things that you doing, the way you moving, it's gonna have you locked up. Oh, what you know, smoke, what you know, smoke. Man, you got all this money, man. We need to quit the game. And we need to start a record label. Oh, ain't nobody starting no record labels. Nah, these niggas are sitting down for 10 years and these young niggas is making all this money in music. So I know it's like, damn, it's running through their head. Like, damn, the nigga smoke told me. I tell people all the time, like, if you see me slipping, if you see something on my face, if you see something in my nose, please tell me. Please tell me if I'm about to smoke some weed and you're like, man, that's some bullshit. People tell me, I hear it. Nigga, I bought it, I'm about to smoke it anyway. You know what I'm saying? But then they be like, next time, come holler at my man. He'll get you out the way. Of the night, I went to go holler at my man, I was fucking twisted, dog. Twisted. I was in rare form, but I went out with somebody, and you know what I'm saying? So every now and again, I celebrate. And he was like, yo, you drunk. I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You off your pivot, dog. And he know how I be moving. So he's like, yo, text me when you get home. Dog, you know I'm safe. I'm good. I'll post something on, on, on Facebook and Instagram or something. I'll let you know that I'm safe. But I'm not going to remember to text you, but I appreciate it. So I hit him the next morning. He was like, yeah, I was good. How was everything last night? He was like, nigga, you was lit. Yeah, I was lit, a little motherfucker. Like, man, I'm glad you good, dog. Yeah, he was like, you need to slow down. I'm like, homeboy, you ain't never got to worry about seeing me like that again. You ain't never got to worry about it. But thank you for telling me. See, y'all, y'all be like, oh, he hating on me. He trying to block my shine. Come on, man. People don't tell you stuff because they hating on you. That's some new shit. That's some new shit. People nowadays, they want everybody to accept everything because they accept everything. They'll eat anything. They'll drink anything. There used to be a time where people used to hide their drug habits. You know what I'm saying? Niggas would go be like, do a little whatever they do. He got man, this nigga got energy for days. He got that. Come to find out this nigga was on coat the whole time he was running his private practice. We didn't know this. We thought you was just a good uh uh what's it called? Physical physical therapist. Nigga, we didn't know you was on cocaine. Yeah, nigga, I was on cocaine for years. That's how they used to do it back in the day. The people who was with them knew what they were doing, and that was it. But now, everybody does almost everything. It don't matter. If you're not doing it, you're condoning it. I know y'all see y'all peoples. I know y'all see y'all little nieces and nephews out there. I know y'all see y'all little nieces and nephews doing drugs. I know y'all see them hanging with the wrong crowd. I know y'all see them not being productive, not doing things that you would want an adult to do. Yeah, it's cool. They young, they teens, but you should still drop a bug in their head. Man, when I was growing up, my grandmother and my grandfather, thank God they I spent so much time around there because they used to say all kind of little old sayings like only a bum sleeps in all day. 
Grandpa, leave me alone. You need to get up. You need to do something productive. Grandpa, ain't nobody doing that type of shit. Well, you need to read. You need to have you a book or something. Put something in your mind. I grew up thinking, man, he don't understand the ways of the world. I'm not saying that he does. Because, you know, the world has changed so fast that it's impossible for older people to really understand things. But some of the ways that they used to conduct themselves and some of their um, principles, yeah, their principles, it was for everybody's good. It was for everybody's good. Like, I understand now, like, I can't sleep all day. I want to sleep all day. But the reason he says that only bums sleep all day is because there's always something that I can be doing. If I had nothing to do, I could teach my kids something. I could show them something. I could work with them. I'm not the type of person to say, oh, they'll learn that at school. They'll learn that later on in life. They'll learn that from their friends. I asked somebody the other day, like, you talk about all the birthday parties that you done put on for your kids. You done pay hundreds of dollars for your kids out of your pocket. You feel me? Because you don't have credit. You don't have credit because nobody has ever taught you about credit. Nobody's ever sat you down and said, yo, don't ball out like that. Let these people pay for it and you pay it back each month. Why don't you sit down and you talk to your kids about it? Oh, well, you know, what you going to wait until they get 16, 17 to tell them, hey, you need to uh, work on your spending habits. You need to have some discipline. You need to eat better. Like, people let their kids sleep in all day, eat what they want to eat, lay around, watch what they want to watch. Are you? What? I grew up on the Internet, so I know what's on the Internet. I done seen people put shotguns. Man, I can't even go into all the detail because I ain't trying to get flagged, but you know what's on the internet. And I used to have to sneak it. Back in the day, it wasn't no instant. It used to take about, bruh, it used to take about, I ain't lying, 18 hours. <laughs> 18 hours sometimes to watch a 20-minute video. You would have to start downloading that joint at night. I wake up, I could watch about four minutes. Like, dang, this joint about to be hitting. Go to school, come back. It's about still a little bit time before it's over. And then watch that joint at night. That's how I used to do the joint. That's how I used to do it. Leave that joint running. And don't let the internet, <laughs> don't let the internet go out. That's what built patience for, for us. Back in the, in the day, before that, they used to have to look at maps. I asked my uncle, like, yo, how did you get to Baltimore and then the Ocean City? And then, like, how did y'all have these? Oh, we had maps. And I remember, like, they used to have books with streets, just listed streets, just maps and roads. And you could go to the gas station, you can get them for everywhere in the country. And that's how they got around. So they couldn't be... They couldn't be lightheaded or not thinking about their movements because, dog, you get out here 45 miles away from your house, there's no phone, it's dark, there's no gas. Like, you don't want to put yourself in that situation. So you got to be prepared. But we lost that. And that's why I'm saying maybe it was a little bit of technology that came out and got us all messed up in the game. But we have to find our way back. Because it's crazy that everybody is just like in the twilight zone. Like the storms is getting worse. The death tolls are rising fast. Buildings are collapsing. Famines and shit plagues and shit you already know what's happening the shit's not getting better it's getting worse 
But it's not going to get worse for me and you because we going to be dead. We going to be dead. And the most irresponsible thing is to go about our lives knowing that we going to be dead one day. But not put our kids in a situation to have a better life than we did. Because all we want to do is worry about entertaining them. Entertaining ourselves. Man, people used to used to be like, yo, why you ain't going to church no more? And at first I ain't telling them, I'm like, man, you know, it ain't for me. But now I tell them, man, I'm not getting lied to anymore. You're not going to pick selective scriptures to read to me and then keep recycling them, Jones. No. Like, if you want to keep 1,000, then I will come. But since you can't, I won't. But I grew up going to church three times a week, sometimes three times a day. If there was an event on Sunday, and then they had church after, and then my grandfather might have to preach somewhere later, dog, I was in church. <sighs> Man, I probably was in church for 12 hours some Sundays. 12 hours, and I'm not over-exaggerating or nothing. Like, Baptists, they get sit in. But now that I'm an adult, and I sit back and I'm like, dang, if I would have took them same hours that I was sitting there having fun at that time and eating chicken and ham and potato salad and green beans and then they had a cake and then they had punch and then we go to the next service and you know at the next service they got to celebrate too. We want to thank our guest preacher for coming by so we made you green beans, ham, pork and and, and, and chicken, and of course it's got to be fried. You know it's got to be fried. So we eating twice. So as time goes on, I'm like, dang. I'm looking around and I'm like, how come I don't own shit? Why is it that the people that I go to school with, because I went to school in the suburbs. I'm from the suburbs, you can't hear from my voice. So they, they got all this stuff. They living at their parents' house. Isn't this the house your family grew up in? Yeah, my parents, they went and got a new house and we rent this from them. What? People do that? Yeah, my parents got a few houses. What? Your parents got a few houses? What the? Your parents got money like that? Oh, no. See, they had the foundation first. Instead of going and spending all their money on Jordans and purses and rings and eyelashes and weaves and, and gold chains like I got on seven. <laughs> they had stocks or they had real estate or they had businesses or they had a trade. Like, I think it's a shame that we don't have trades. I don't have a trade. My trade is... Uh, I don't know what my trade is. I can't tell you what my trade is. But <laughs> man, I want to be able to see like professional blacks. You know what I'm saying? Like my grandfather, and my grandmother house that they've been living there for before I was born. One of the pipes burst because that's what happens. That's why you know what I mean I never got into real estate because I'm it's a big responsibility. So I'm like, dang, yo, this is a great time. For me to get a team of brothers up in this junk, the insurance company gonna cut the check. They gonna cut the check. We just gotta do the work. You know what I'm saying? But I only know a few brothers. And this is my grandmother's house, so I can't put her off on hold. We gotta go to a contractor. And Lord knows what the contractor doing in the house. We can't be over there standing over their shoulders 24 hours a day. They could be doing all kind of stuff. We don't know them. 